Hello, dear friends. The Research and Publication Ethics. This very paper has been introduced by the University Grants Commission and it has become mandatory for all students of MPhil and PhD. That is, uh, with the op opinion or with the optimism that each and every scholar as well as the MPhil students whenever they will be carrying out their research activities. So they will be ethically sound and they will know all the labyrinths that are there in the academic domain regarding the PhDs or doctoral dissertations and MPhil dissertations. And that's why this particular 30 day week or 30 days or yes, there is 30 hours as most probably there is a 30 hours program uh, is devised by UDC or is has const constructed or rather planned by UGC and the same thing is being held in the department or rather in the University of North Bengal by the different faculties uh, of this university, myself uh, being the faculty in the Department of Library and Information Science. Uh, I have been assigned to take uh, four such lectures in this particular paper like research and publication ethics. The first paper or rather the first lecture uh, that is what that is the uh, selective reporting and misrepresentation of data. So here in this particular lecture we will go with the detail of selective reporting and at the same time how data can be misrepresented and how data is usually misrepresented and what the selective representation is, how you are, we are taking the help of what the researchers are actually taking the help of words to turn down the very um, result or negative results. They are suppressing the negative results by the use of the um, tone of the words or rather the usage of the words and at the same time uh, whenever the data is giving them some bit of negative uh, results or negative values so they are trying to um, curve it down by using the different types of mechanisms like spinning like uh, selective representation reporting like the data misappropriation using some kind of statistical measures which is not at all worthy for that particular uh, study also this type of things that's selecting so but you see um, one thing I must say that is doing all such things requires some bit of knowledge that is if you have uh, a fair knowledge of the data and if you have some bit of fair understanding of data then there is always a chance that you can even manipulate too because those who do not have the idea of how data should be represented or like that so obviously these smart fellows, they are like that, they are having the abilities to carve it down, they are having all the abilities to prepare a good result or rather um, enhance the scientific domain with their insights. But they usually try to take some bit of measures by which um, they become prone to uh, this type of vulnerabilities and ultimately what is actually doing that was actually kind of ethical and social crime because the knowledge you are generated with the help of all such things that is the misrepresentation of data and the same time the selective reporting of your fact or rather your result ultimately the outcome of the result becomes faulty and what you are trying to portray that particular thing is obviously not a very um, efficient one or reliable one or valid if you learn rather it can be validated so with these things we will be starting with that one that is the selective representation selective reporting as well as the misrepresentation of data so get tuned yourself and in the next time or the just within a minute I'm coming with that one that is selective reporting and misrepresentation data so this will be delivered to you with the help of PowerPoint slides and these slides are packed with information and many times some of the information might go beyond the of your head so I'll try to demystify all the very concepts uh, 
actually some lamb to eat or rather be behind it. So get tuned or rest assured you will understand that one was there and was there and at the same time how to carb that one uh, with your effort, positive effort and how you can better excel uh, by understanding the very concept of selective reporting as well as the uh, misrepresentation of data. So well, friends, now we are starting our presentation that is selective represent reporting and misrepresentation of data. Now one thing is here you see the two primarily two aspects are there that is one is the selective reporting and the second one is the misrepresentation of data. Both are rather related with the latter part of your activities that is the reporting and misrepresentation of data actually whenever you are seeing the research design you will see that one so after collection of data so these particular steps are actually coming uh, after the finding sections or rather whenever you are you already did your study and you already collected the raw materials raw data from the field or rather some other places from the, the lab in other places and ultimately while you were analyzing the data you are rather making organizing the data and by that time you are looking you are people in your peep into the data structure or the data content of the data in such a way that is you are thinking that one whether the data is rather giving you a bit of satisfaction in your mind that is yes that data is actually looking good and um, that data can be represented but whenever you are rather not very much sure about the data whenever you are not very much satisfied with the data itself at the very um, uh, actually at the latter stage of your write-up then you are actually thinking of these two aspects are coming at that time that is the selective reporting and misrepresentation of data that is you are trying to do something trying to take some measures you are trying to uh, invite something in your phd till date or till now which was going with your ethics as well as is your intuit so right now you are just shifting that one to something uh, more vulnerable one with your with your imagination and extended ideas and that is where the perspective of selective reporting and misrepresentation of data stands so actually if you go for that one you will see the research data almost all the countries so might be this particular thing is in India or other other places actually the research data is a public funded resource that is coming from the taxpayers money and it passes into the private enterprises without explicit and remuneration to the public per se but different types of researches are going on each and every time and obviously it's not true that all researches or all out, outcome of all researches all all studies are rather going directly to the society or doing such kind of good for the people uh, from where you have taken money for your research so organizations will obviously try to maximize their values by their investment what they invested and the growing opinion from the funders that is the across that the data is a part of their value so most of the cases those who will be paying you they will obviously will ask you to develop something more society oriented one or the socially focused research ultimately what by which you can actually get you can do something for the social goal or rather the social development and practically here yes, the research data is important so research integrity and the outcome of the research is very much important whenever you are talking about uh, the ethics of research that is any such kind of measure should be carved should be handled very seriously where the research outcome is rather going against the social development or rather it is inversely proportional to the social development so now 
we are coming to this uh, graph or schematic representation where we are actually stating that one that is this is a kind of spiral or rather you can say that one data life cycle or not spiral rather this is a kind of circle of data or this should be a spiral but here you see this creation of data is rather first what are the phases thing you know that one you are we are creating the data and obviously we are having so many data management plans and all other things then we are, we are going to process the data this processing of data creating the data means what so whenever you were going to a field study whenever you were actually working in a lab and you are doing your own work with the help of the previous works with your other insights with your own abilities with your own uh, concepts and cognitions you are actually creating the data and then you are processing the data after processing the data and process means what what the data is there you process filter that one a kind of processing a kind of filtration of that one and then you started analyzing that one desynthesizing desynthesization for the future sharing then you preserve that one and then you are giving access to that data that is actually by writing something somewhere writing something somewhere but and then this data is being reused by other fellows so this is how the research is going on data creation processing curation filtration uh, storage retrieval reuse again recreation so this is the way by which we do create data and now here comes that is where things can go wrong now obviously you suppose you have the data so now you have the data but you have some data personal interest with the data personal interest as early as you, as early as possible you have to submit your phd you want to go for that one that is if you complete your phd or rather the thesis or your research earlier then you will get the direct promotion so then you have the other measures like the sponsors interest and the qrp and rm and all these three things together is actually prompting you forcing you compelling you to go for positive results false positive results i see so it apparently seems that one is a positive result but actually it is not positive it's a false positive that is you are in such a way that is you are always trying to you are always trying to complete your phd or the doctoral thesis uh, in such a way that is it should give some result uh, although you are showing that one as a positive result but it is actually the false now what could be the false positives or false positive results so you are actually making citations giving much more citations or rather the citations you have never used all those things then you are trying to catch the media attention by writing different or the salami slicing you know that one uh, by uh, representing the data in the chunks and making a lot of publications with that uh, that is you not you are not revealing the whole result in a particular publication you are just actually making the chunks of that one and you are making the publications and at the same time you are citing the same thing is here it comes the self citation co-citation all these things and ultimately what you are actually going to get more grants and tenure so this is how these things are actually going but see the problem problem is what all these three things that is actually whenever the personal interest is coming this qrp and rm that is a pressure from your uh, researchers pressure from your guide pressure from your authority pressure from the body's time limitation all these things are actually coming to this one and this is what the problematic situation we are having next thing is that you see uh, another concept is here that is the concept of spinning now what is that spinning spinning is using the vocabulary is using the words uh, by which you are trying to tone down uh, the very finding of your research that is negative finding of research you are toned down the negative finding of research by 
conscious or rather unconscious effort it's not like that so this is how you see that is uh, that is publication is not simply the reporting of the facts and straight straightforward analysis thereof now here you see the authors have broad latitude when writing their reports broad latitude writing their own and may be tempted to consciously or unconscious spin their study findings spin use of different vocabularies use of specialized vocabularies use of non-related vocabularies and with that one spin is rather the specific uh, intentional or unintentional reporting that fails to faithfully reflect the nature and range of findings and that effect the impression the result produced in readers so the way you are representing your research might not be that much but as because you are very uh, good at writing that one in such a way some kind of twisting and that is what the problem of spinning is that is you are rather glorifying exemplifying your finding with the shadow of vocabularies and words i would say spinning could be the problem of understanding the methodological principle as well as a kind of parroting the common practices Oh, this parroting means that is mimicking the common practices that is actually what the other fellows are doing on the researcher is also doing the same thing a kind of train of uh, a thing is going on so the strain a kind of continuity is going on and a form of unconscious behavior or actual willingness so this is what if it is intentional this is really bad so for intention there might be something uh, that is actually we have to carve it down and for the unconscious we have to warn them we have to uh, tell them we have to make them ethically sound so that they can actually avoid all such anomalies that may creep in while they are writing the reports however spain if it when occurs uh, many times often favors the author's vested interest that is intellectual academic and so forth so uh, actually this is uh, this painting should be a kind of um, great or rather a kind of threatening aspect right now in case of literary writing specifically for the phd write-up and almost all the time so i can say you one thing like spinning you see uh, one example i can cite so one particular individual uh, did phd and uh, according to the mathematical measurements the sample from the undefined population came near about 380 and after doing the result after completion of the result whenever she found that one that is this particular result is not uh, giving that much of you can say eye-catching result um, she just doubled that one and made this um, sample more just twice of that one and claiming that one the inference she drawn from that research is same as the inference she drawn from the previous half of the sample so this is what this is the effect of skin spinning and this is actually some kind of thing uh, that is the author's best interest as intellectual academic and so forth so these are the problems and you see here comes the two aspects one is the falsification and the second one is the fabrication now falsification is rather what you see that is a kind of changing omission of that one research results to support claims hypothesis and is a manipulation of research instrumentation material processes manipulation of images all this and reads too much between the lines this is falsification. fabrication is making something falsification is something giving the data false data the changing omission of it and a fabrication is nothing but the construction see two um, basic differences in there falsification is where the data is already there and at the same time while you are citing the data while you are writing the data while you are so at portraying the data you are trying to visualize the data you are just twisting the data of your own that is a kind of data is already there and you are changing that one 
and this is the manipulation of research instruments see suppose you use beaker and other one is writing something you got that one that is materials and you see that one some of the materials you didn't get and you were saying that one that is own you included that material also processes and many times the uh, data you know right now um, images so these are rather a big travel for research because many times this image can be change shaped or rather altered in such a way with the use of digital media so any image whether that particular image is rather the real image or not or rather a kind of false image uh, no one will understand that one just by replacing substituting the very uh, context of the image so it, if you actually produce that one that will be the falsification and fabrication is rather engineered something you manufactured constructed the in and this is addition of data observation it is actually that never occurred in the data gathering process or the examinations so it was no way there and what you did from your study with your understanding with your own thinking you just started inserting filling out that one that is the extra of the experiments and you are claiming at the latter stage that is a complete data set you are actually saying that one yes this is a result but actually might be 60 percent are actually coming from your own research and other 40 percent what you did you just inserted you prepared you made you engineered and you did that one why because you want to show a good result and that is why that's the fabrication of data so two aspects one is falsification and another aspect you see as i was saying you that one that is the misrepresentation of data what is that deceptive communication now see the usage of statistics it is having the numerous opportunities to you to misrepresent data that is you can use one kind of statistical technique or rather the analysis of variance so which might not at all be implemented in your research but you did that one uh, just to glorify your research just to make your research to look better result look better and another aspect is that you can eliminate some of the values the values which are negative or rather the values which are rather near to zero so what you are actually doing you are disregarding all those things discarding all those uh, trimming down the outliers and cleaning up the raw data and you are just representing the data by citing only the bigger values and you are saying that one all those uh, lower values are not having that much of impact in your research and thus in this way you are rather Cleaning up means what? You are rather eliminating some of the core things which might give you some bit of different result. And obviously the draft you are, graph you are doing, making figures you are making, or rather you are actually uh, representing the statistical form, it is rather giving you some kind of falsified figure and false results. And that is where the big problem of misrepresentation of data. So you are using the suggestive language for the rhetorical effect. And the line between misrepresentation of data and disagreement about research method is often blurry. This is what important thing that is what. That is, am I misrepresenting the data? Or rather, I am disagreement or rather I have a great disagreement about the research method. This is bloody. That is what kind of research method I will choose and what type of results that may come. And if I say that one, yes, it is a misrepresentation of data, many a times a researcher can challenge that one also. That is why, that is how you can say that one, this particular statistical method is not fit for that one. So this is actually one particular problem. So it is quite difficult to define and that's why there are a kind of thing that one this misrepresentation of data or misrepresenting the data 
in the form of scientific misconduct is not rather been uh, considered that much of uh, you can say that one impact having impact on that one but it is important to call attention to the problem of misrepresentation that is if you are concerned with the promoting the objectivity of the research so many science errors that actually comes from the misrepresentation of data now here you see almost all the times so that is many times uh, you can challenge you can you can you can even pose uh, um, against the very concept or very very ideas of all these things because all these uh, ideas or all these check and balances are not foolproof also now you can say that one how on what context you were saying me that i am misrepresenting the data yes that is challengeable and that's why many organizations they are not or many of the people they are not actually even thinking that one all these things are having that much of impact but question is whenever we see the integrity of research the scientific aptitude or rather your ethical moral or rather the social you can say that was the social responsibility for developing the knowledge society or rather um, you can say that when a kind of generating social good social capital in that perspective whenever you are saying that one yes I am a researcher and I am developing something and here the most important thing is that uh, you must always try to uh, go for direct representation of the data uh, don't actually use such kind of measures by eliminating some of the concepts some of the concepts or some of the values some of the values by eliminating by cleaning the raw data or choosing different kinds of uh, statistical methods whether you understand that one or not so you are using that one and uh, taking a kind of language by which by twisting that one you are actually um, trying to say something uh, in such a way that is not been represented properly by the users who are actually going through your research results so misrepresentation another kind of misrepresentation is obviously there that i must say that one to you specifically statistical analysis whenever it is represented in any kind of thesis or rather uh, doctoral dissertation so actually there we usually see that one the researcher defines that one or rather narrates that one what is already stated in the graph itself so this analysis is actually a kind of double analysis the researcher is making there is one analysis he analyzed that one he processed the information he analyzed that one with the help of statistical graphs or statistical presentation with the help of graphical presentation or rather the mathematical presentation but at the same time he can't help himself without being narrating it with the same thing like that one that is this data represents that up to this is this this males are these females are these and the total number of uh, total percentage of this x variable is this y variable is this now see from the data itself from the graph itself it is quite clear there is no um, actual meaning to write that one same in the natural language or rather reverse but so here the analysis should be that one in what context this result is coming that there is what are the hurdles and why such things are coming and that should be analyzed and whenever you are representing that one with the help of some kind of twisted thing and without writing the real cause or without knowing the real cause might be your questionnaire was like that which never reflected that one but you are inferring something writing something of your own that is what that will lead to misrepresentation of data okay so next thing is that now roots roots of selective reporting and misrepresentation that is this how these things are actually coming that is why people are going for selective reporting and they are actually doing the misrepresentation but you see there are several causes so these causes are rather quite uh, natural and practically applicable to almost all the places and 
I think in the first or second or third slide, I shown you a kind of graph that is where the pressures are there from the different places that is which actually prompted for going for the selective reporting. In that case, also the same thing, the departmental publishing requirements, the publishing requirements, that is your department is rather asking you to publish and it is required for a promotion, you know, most of the cases. So our scholars and our PhD scholars, the MPL students, you know that one, they are the budding uh, faculties, they are the budding, um, that is university or college professors, teachers. And obviously, you know that one, for the promotions, we have a lot of requirements regarding these articles, a lot of stringent measures are there competitive pressure, competitive pressure, pressure that the intraneous pressure, extraneous pressures, and then institutional, regional, national recognition. Obviously, the more international, regional, national recognition you will get, you will be considered as a more prolific one in your field, and you will have, you will be considered as one of the most authoritative fellow. So these are actually the causes. The financial remunerations, media publicity, inadequate data management practices, policies, and storage resources. That is, you are not very much um, sure about how data are being managed, what are the policies. Time is a pressure. Specifically, you have to complete your research within five years, minimum three or maximum five or six, and then you can, if you are one woman scholar, then you can extend something over there. But if you are rather one male scholar, then you have to appeal uh, otherwise. So this time, the more time you will take, the more challenges will there, actually challenges will come. So all these factors, what you were actually, even your literature review, what you did actually do, so that will also be, become obsolete whenever you go the time will pass or that is time passes by. So you have to uh, include more new things to your literature review. And these uh, researchers, they do not feel well equipped with the knowledge available about how to publish. That is the publishing. And lastly, you know, legal and ethical concerns. These are also the most important concerns that we know. So next one is coming like that one, this honesty, objectivity, and integrity in research. Uh, this, you see, honesty, objectivity, and integrity and avoiding bias in experimental design, data analysis, data interpretation, and reporting of data, results, methods, and the procedures, and all comes are optimal for research. Now, it may sound like uh, some kind of a kind of uh, coming from some uh, hollow things or rather hollow vessels is coming like these words like honesty, objectivity and integrity. But believe me, so if you have a very um, greater uh, understanding of the subject and if you really think about the subject and if you are serious about thinking of the subject, and if you did your data collection properly, then rest assured that you can interpret the data with much more honesty and much more objectivity and much more integrity. But if the primary stages, whenever you collected the data, you didn't pay that much of importance in your data collection method and really on the methodology itself, so might be at the latter stages, you will find that one, your data is actually incomplete. You are, you cannot even infer, you cannot even analyze the data because there are so many loopholes, so there are so many factors are missing and that is where the problem is. So that is what the most important thing is that data interpretation and reporting. Here, you must have to be honest. Honest in what sense? First of all, you collect the data. And once you collect the data, be sure about that one, that is you, what the data you are collecting, that data is fine, and that data can be represented, and even the data you collected are having some kind of negative impact, or rather not impact, I'm saying that, only kind of negative values 
or not that much of affirmation is there in the dead data even in that sense also you being one bias free researcher and one honest researcher you have to represent that data in that manner in the in that shape don't try to twist that one reshape that one reconstruct that one and and if you do that one it won't be optimal for the research so fabrication falsification or misrepresentation of data is plainly unethical and should not be resorted to framing outliers outliers you know that one that is what that is uh, whenever you are ranking that one uh, suppose you are rather trying to find out that thing that is a kind of social research in case of social research you are getting that one the um, you are working on the workers and at the same time you are actually saying that one the workers that is you are reducing those fellows you are discarding those fellows um, who are actually below age 10 and you are not actually taking that one by this way that is by seeing that thing, by saying that thing because they are child and we are not considering them but you see in the rural society in our society if you do not if your research demands that one and if your scope limitation you state that one clearly that one i am not taking those fellows it's okay but if you never stated anything in your scope and if you want to you were saying that one all working fellows in a particular community and ultimately whenever you are seeing that one you are discarding all those fellows that is who are rather uh, below age 10 these are rather trimming the outliers from the data set so what data you collected that was actually included with that one but right now whenever you are calculating you are discarding them so this is what you are outlining you are actually trimming down so obviously whenever you are dry will draw some inferences and you will actually go for some statistical measures so these elimination or this shaming will give you obviously some kind of result which is falsified the result which is not true so obvious these are rather the problem with objectivity of the research and whenever you are stating that one you are not into showing the integrity and at the same time you are breaching the very concept of honesty so next one is you see that is the another aspects of this one there's the honesty now if you say that one how can i understand that one i am honest being a researcher that is honesty represents that one you must go for the valid interpretations and justifiable claims valid interpretation and justifiable claims reliability that is the performing and reporting research reliable what you did in your data collection you are reporting the same thing objectivity transparent and your data your result can be very fiable impartiality and independence that is from pressure from the interest don't actually think that research will give you something new in your life might be that initially you will get something some pleasure might be you will get some bit of money many of the people they do not do research for the money but if you do research impartially and if you do research just by thinking on that one that is i want to do something i want to justify something for my uh, subject for my domain itself then you will see that one the, your research will carry much more value than that of other places than that of the thing you are rather than your own bias open communication and open communication means do whenever you did your research and you completed your research and you are writing that one so ensure availability and accessibility of your that is don't be shy of criticism don't be shy of hiding that one let it be seen by others so that they can also raise questions about the integrity and validity or rather the honesty for that you actually put into your research 
and duty of care that is also comes under the objectivity that is for the research subject so whenever you are studying that one the human subjects you are studying the community you have to understand the community value you have to understand the community belief community faith you cannot hurt that one experimentation in case of the experimental animals so we have to be very much um, honest with that careful and you have to be adorable to with them so fairness referencing crediting relationship with the colleagues and responsibility for the few science future science generation so you have to mentor that one see once you have developed might be you are taking too much of pain to learn or to get all these things but once you will be equipped with all these armors now you can train all of your companions that is how to use those armors whenever they are in distress and how to make them immune to these particular problems or this very uh, concept of dishonesty and this is the basic thing for you can see the ethical aspects and this uh, what are the issues involved in the ethical issues involved in the data reporting reporting now see first one is that what we are actually um, identified what we identified the different types of issues the failing to include number of eligible participants that is whenever you are actually making the sample or uh, this is the important thing that is you are uh, you have to be very cautious about that one that is you have to include the number of eligible participants more inaccurate reporting of missing data points inaccurate reporting you are not why those things were not treated you have to write that one clearly failing to report all pertinent data many of the cases whenever you are writing that one different types of groups you are making and you see by covering all the categories or right uh, lastly you are actually saying that one others now see whenever you are saying others actually what constitute these others what constitutes this particular group the other you have to write that one clearly so otherwise this will mean that one because no one will understand that is whether a kind of cross classification is there that is something is kept in others as well as something is has put in the other places also so this is very important thing failing to report negative result that is what one most important thing that is failing to report negative results because many of the researchers they after doing three or four years of study whenever they are actually uh, seeing that one their uh, results is giving negative they become uh, skeptical about their um, findings and they go for this one allowing research sponsors to influence research results don't uh, even go for that one research is some kind of honest things don't allow others to influence your research inappropriate graph levels there is no point of describing this one reporting percentages rather than that of the actual numbers these percentages are rather very showy and if you show that one catchy thing i catchy one because you see whenever you are writing one the value one but if you write that one that is 2.39 percent that is 2.39 is more than one and obviously we're seeing that one that is yes uh, it's rather showing something actually good or rather fine the reporting no difference when power is inadequate then data dragging splitting the data into multiple publication that is actually the salami slicing inappropriate use of terminology with without precise definition that is you see many a times you are writing that on the abbreviation forms you are writing something and you are not actually using the definitions that is for what purpose you are using that particular terminology because each and every subject is having their own terminology a kind of own vocabulary but if you actually invite other vocabularies in your own study first of all you have to do that one you have to report that one and many times you have to know that one whenever you are using the abbreviations at least one or two times one time you have to write the abbreviation along with the full that is full uh, 
term of that abbreviation or full string of that abbreviation along with that one the abbreviation should be there and later you can refer that one that abbreviation and reporting conclusions are not supported by the data we have seen so many of such things that is the research questions and the objectives as well as the hypothesis all the things are rather in different positions and the conclusion is giving something different ignoring citations or prior work the challenge stated conclusions or call current findings into question that is you are actually ignoring that one so this one is very important because if it matches with your conclusion then your phd is rather at stake but many times it can be like that one your current findings if you suddenly discover that one that is something is there which is rather being contrary to your which going contrary to your finding uh, there is might be a tendency that you don't want to incorporate that one with your study and these inflation of research results for the media the inference inflation of research results and the results in appropriately level the statistical tests so now you see there is one particular um, agency uh, that is committee of publication ethics and the committee on publication ethics and they have their own side that is https publication ethics.org they are rather providing the leadership in thinking of publication ethics and practical issues to educate people so if you people go to this particular site you will see that one there are the different aspects regarding the um, ethical issues that one has to follow for that one that is scholarly research and its publication and this site is rather showing you the different types of uh, misconducts or rather so this one allegations authorships and contributions so many of the things are there so if you go there you will have a clear understanding of that one what really is going on regarding research as well as the scholarly publication world and what are the different con actually misconducts are there how internationally that are being trying people are trying to carve that one and what are the international status and what are the national status also you can go there and you can check that one you know that one ugc has already uh, made some policies with that one that is the checking of plagiarism for misconduct or all such things they have already developed that one this particular course and each and every university imparting phd and mphil education they have to they are bound to uh, carry out this course of 30 hours and another thing is that ugc has developed you know core journals they have the peer review journals and ugc care you know that one where they are trying to um, uh, sanitize the information overload or rather the problems of um, publication or rather the misconducts uh, done by the researchers or the authors and at the same time there are other things also there are uh, www.retraction.com one site is obviously there where you can go that one uh, or some of the journals who are actually pulling out the research research articles from the um, authors uh, by means of some their some of their policies and how the authors are rather claiming that one no this is their fundamental thing their fundamental and with these uh, studies and with these um, um, aspects of misconduct and non misconduct some real issues are also coming up and if you go to the www.retraction.com you will understand that one some of the people who are being challenged very notable fellow who are being challenged to withdraw their uh, scientific productions like journal articles from the journals because of the journal policies and later uh, they um, rectified that one or rather the journal editors editorial policy they changed that one so all these things are actually coming with these ethical and moral aspects of research 
So next thing is that one, you see the case study, you see how to respond to a reader's repeated concerns. That is complaints and appeals, journal management, post publication decision. So one particular thing is there, that is suppose you are, uh, you have submitted one thing, but different types of complaints are actually there. So you can go for appeal, you have to issue, go with the journal management, then post publication discussion, corrections, all these things. An author displays bullying behavior towards handling editors. So this one, so so lot of things are there. If you go there, you will see that one. These are the case under guidance. If you go there, you will actually see the case studies, and you will get that one. And even you can go to the www.retraction.com just to get much more uh, information regarding this. And uh, these are the references. But I think although yeah, I have mentioned there two or three things. But as because all the information here is rather being presented with the understanding of the Creative Commons license. So actually the license rests with those fellows here for the academic purpose. We invited, we actually gathered some of the things and I try to narrate that one. In case of any such problem, uh, you can um, call me or you can actually catch me or you can ping me in sghosh at the rate right of nbu.ac.in sghosh at the rate right of nbu.ac.in so 